So we need to make sure that we have the resiliency, the scale out, and the multi-tenancy functionality to do that um, across, uh, across a carrier's network and all of their enterprise tenants. And finally, going beyond that connectivity and beyond those built-in services, how do I mix and bring in a multi-vendor best-of-breed environment where I can support service chaining to different functions, whether they're on premises, in the POP, in the data center, or in the cloud? And so this could be things like SaaS breakout, security scrubbing, uh, virtual firewalls, et cetera. So we need to have all of the right technology in place to do this. From an operational perspective, now I need to make sure that my ops team can actually manage this technology. So I need to do things like service assurance and troubleshooting. So I need to be able to see what's going on in my services. So I need to be able to break those service views out and understand how I visualize a service that is now decoupled from the transport network. I need to be able to understand the underlay and the overlay where it touches my underlays. That's a significant value that the operators in the audience here can bring to the SD-WAN environment. You have visibility of the underlay. It's not a ships in the night service. So that allows us to do things like fault correlation. What happens if a port goes down? What happens if a switch or a router fails? What's the impact on the overlay service? Why did the overlay with its own performance monitoring choose to switch a path in the night? Well, it could have been because there was a fiber cut or there was a router taken out of service for maintenance. We can go back in time and identify this. Finally, we also need to look at inventory. Uh, so we need to understand what's out there in the network. Who in the audience has had the fun of dealing with a security event uh, that's required touching tens, hundreds, or thousands of devices to upgrade them in a very short time period? I I've had to do that. I'm sure a few other people have had to do that. But first, I have to know what's in my network and what versions it's running and where they are so I can assess the scope of the, that impact. So I need to be able to get real-time inventory view and really have that, that interface to the network to ask it, what is running here? What are you? So we really want that central API and that top-down control. And then we can put all of this together, and it pops out into end-to-end -end health monitoring of the service. So we can actually start to operationalize this technology and really build a carrier class service around SD-WAN. We also want to really dig a little bit into security, right? I mean, everyone is focusing on this. I mentioned micro-segmentation earlier. I mentioned the fact that we're already provisioning topology into an SD-WAN service. So if I have the concept of these zones or these segments, I can start to pull out interesting stats and I can start to do things around that automation framework for it. So I can start to focus on, well, actually, yeah, retail and corporate locations shouldn't be talking to each other except maybe for SIP and RTP because they're making phone calls. But if I see a retail location suddenly pounding away on my CRM zone in a data center, that's not normal. That shouldn't happen. So I want to, take, I want to understand from the network what's going on, and if necessary, take an action, like take that zone offline, quarantine it, flag it, redirect that into a service like an IDS or IPS to get a deeper analysis of what's going on. Maybe this is the next breakout of WannaCry or some equivalent uh, malware. So I can get the, those security functions directly embedded into the network, allowing me to better use my other security functions like firewalls and IDSs. So being able to do this uh, operationally is, is pretty powerful, right? I also need to be able to continue with my business, right? And I, I think here is a really key point. 62% of people looking at SD-WANs report that they're going to continue investing in MPLS. So it's either going to increase or remain unchanged. SD-WAN is just a service on top of the MPLS transport. And in some ways, it's, it's really going to increase the value of the MPLS transport services, layer two and layer three, because we're making them more consumable to the end customer. More consumable means more traffic. So we need, we're really gonna see that we, we need to continue to support the underlying infrastructure. So how does that look, right? So I already have my VPLS and IPVPN and SD-WAN services, but I still need a way to get from the old to the new. So it's important from a technology migration perspective that I have a story that talks about getting my off-net sites from partners or, off -net or sites that are on my internet networks and binding them to my existing MPLS infrastructure. 
I'm not going to flip 200 sites or 2,000 sites from what we're running today to SD-WAN overnight. So we have to have all of these capabilities to migrate and maintain the business continuity, but also to continue to promote and use that extensive MPLS capability that we have for layer two and layer three services. And then finally, you know, we want to grow revenues and profits. I think we've, we've heard a bit this week that obviously the, the business ecosystem is changing. Um, so we want to figure out how we use SD-WAN beyond connectivity to grow those revenues and profits. So that means having a very broad partnership capability. We need to be able to mix and match, build best of breed solutions, um, and put services together using a, a broad ecosystem. We also want to be able to mix and match, and I'm sure my colleagues here are gonna talk a lot about um, branch in a box or VCPE functionality, but it, this is a really powerful story. Being able to bring in VNFs, deploy them on premises, whether they're on a, a VCPE or whether they're in a data center or they're in a central office. Building a complex service topology is going to allow us to, to um, increase revenue, increase customer stickiness, uh, as long as we have the capabilities to make this consumable. So all of this comes together and really says, how do I make this work, right? It's not a transaction, it's a journey. We need to look at all of the pieces to make SD-WAN successful. Um, you know, we, and there's a lot of components here to make sure that you can do this. So finally, um, since I had to do a bit of a dance there at the beginning, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give a few minutes back. Um, you know, we need a complete SD-WAN solution, right, that incorporates technology operations, continuity, and the business case. Making sure that you have the story to bind those enterprise applications wherever they may be, whether they're in the data center, whether they're in the public cloud, whether they're on premises in the CPE or in existing IT environments, to the branch locations, whatever a branch is. Is it something where I'm putting a physical device? Is it somewhere I'm putting a virtual device? Do I need to make sure I have common capabilities across all of those? And these are some of the areas that we as Nuash have invested very, very heavily to develop a carrier class, scalable SD-WAN solution that solves these problems. And we continue to innovate across this. Um, so I hope that's given you a bit of a perspective on how we get to the bright future. Um, I think everything this week has been very SDN, very SD-WAN centric. But obviously from our perspective, we do see this as the fabric of the future, that programmable uh, network that enables more than just connectivity. So I hope that was informative and thank you very much.